I'm Connor Old and welcome to another episode of Masters of Controlled Chaos. And today we're going to be looking at an explosive director, uh, the director of Transformers, of Pain of Gain of the recent 13 hours. People love him, some people at least. Critics absolutely hate him. I'm talking about none other than Michael Bay. Welcome back guys, this is the second episode we're doing with the improved mic. Uh, last episode turned out pretty well I think with the mic and the audio issues. Of course I was sick so you never know. I'm a little bit better, a little bit over my flu sort of this time. I'm still under that so apologies for the beginning there. Um, but if you're new to the series, what I do every single week is um, break down a new filmmaker and I talk about what makes them great. That's sort of the central topic. And then I also look at what I think is their best movie. What, I consider, what is my favorite movie, and then uh, what I think is sort of an underrated movie of their film filmography. Sometimes all three match up, sometimes only two, and they split, uh, but you know, you can't be the best and underrated while being the favorite. It's very rare. But nonetheless, I took a controversial pick this time, and I chose Michael Bay. I did this because it's the re releasing the week that his upcoming movie, Transformers 4, uh, 5, The Last Night's coming out. I can't believe he's done five Transformers movies. As you can see here, he's doing a press tour for this last Transformers movie. Uh, but that's one thing that Michael Bay, I said in his intro, when I think of him, I think of really one word, and that word is explosive. Uh, you know, he, there's horror stories of him being sort of like an asshole on set. He's sort of like explosive and can be angry and burst out anytime. Of course, he has a lot of explosion on the set. His editing style is very explosive and everything's just like chaotic in a sense. That's why a lot of people use the term when they're referring to his movies, the Bayhem, not mayhem, but Bayhem, get it? And uh, that just refers to his chaotic sort of style. And if you, whether you like him or you hate him, you could not uh, disregard his style. He definitely has a unique style. And that's the sort of thing that turns off a lot of people. I know some people like, uh, they appreciate style, like Quentin, T Quentin Tarantino or something like that, where they're like, oh, I really like his style. That's why I like his movies. I'm a big fan of his. But no one's necessarily really a big fan of Michael Bay. I would actually consider myself a good fan of Michael Bay for a lot of stuff. And I actually respect him a lot more than a lot of people. And that's why I'm doing this episode. Because even though it's controversial, I decided, you know, I think Michael Bay is great. I think his most of his movies are great. They're good movies at the very least. And I think that he's sort of nailed this sort of, um, Subsection, I don't want to say, but section of the movie and going industry where people, you know, sort of the critics uh, think he's sort of destroying art and all this stuff, but he's definitely nailed the section of people that want to see his movies and like his movies because they are very much, I think, unabashedly um, action oriented, light on story. You know, there's hot girls, explosions, fast editing, sort of a typical action movie or a bro movie or what a lot of people consider that as. And, uh, He's undoubtedly had a lot of success. You know, a couple weeks ago we did James Cameron, the most successful director of all time. And like James Cameron, Michael Bay is incredibly successful. He's definitely got that director's ego in a sense where he thinks he's the best and doesn't care with critics sync and says, you know, he makes movies for teenage boys. And I've always, I agree with him with that, you know, uh, as sort of a teenage a boy, sort of when I first uh, discovered him, and even still now, uh, sort of realizing that, you know, I like his movies, they're, and I like them for what they are, you know. I like the Transformers movies as a kid because I was just a kid and I started like that franchise, but then as I got older and older, I, even Age of Extinction, actually, I actually enjoyed that movie quite a bit because it's just so unabashedly Michael Bay, and he knows what he's uh, getting into. It's like, you know what you're getting into when you get into a Transformers movie. A lot of CGI, a lot of explosions. <laughs> probably some hot girls, uh, charismatic league in, in this sense being Mark Wahlberg, and he's reprising his role in Transformers 5, The Last Night. And they're not gonna be sort of st told well, well stories, or they're not gonna be necessarily edited smoothly. They're definitely more of that music video, TV in a sense, but now TV's a little bit different, but that music video commercial style of the fast paced editing, of things being rapid and your head sort of moving because the music videos and commercials, they have to condense everything to a few minutes. But what he, uh, Michael Bay does is actually take that, takes that sort of idea and stretches it over into everything. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about Bayhem, every, every frame of painting has a great video up there learning about it. But, and that video sort of talks about a central theme that at least I feel with all, a lot of his movies that I want to expand on is him being dynamic. He's a very dynamic film director. All the shots, there's something happening, whether it be flags or lampposts as the video explains. But there's a lot of stuff that are just going on in his movies. And that's why a lot of people don't like the Transformers movies because there's just like all these robots and CGI in your face. But it just like gives you this sense of epicness and scale and that things, there's a lot of production value in a sense. And a lot of people I think consider that good because it's almost more, the more the better. You know, that's a typical Oscar rules. The more production design, the more visual effects, the more likely a chance it gets to win. But I think Michael Bay movies definitely have a lot of that more sort of everything's happening at once. And even still that shows that I think he has a lot of attention to detail in a lot of his movies. Um, but really, 
um, okay, yeah, let's let's turn to this in terms of what I think makes makes him great. Aside from his style, and you either like his style or you don't like his style, that's sort of the defining feature. But he still makes sort of turn your brain off action movies, and I think a lot of critics sort of dismiss those because they're not these art artistic sort of things. But there's a section of people that want to see that, including myself. And sometimes you want to see sort of a turn on your brain off action movie like that. <laughs> Sometimes a little silly and a little craziness and whatnot, but uh, there's definitely some craft to that. And Michael Bay knows how to do that, and he hones his style so well. He knows what he's doing. He's not a stupid guy either. He's not someone that just got lucky, you know. Especially with his first movie, Bad Boys, that took a lot of chance and a lot of risk to do that, actually. And uh, he definitely is able able to make a lot of movies, and he understands the market, like. Transformers Age of Extinction, I think, is a great movie where it did not do well domestic originally. And the Transformers movies have been declining domestically, but he realizes something. The Chinese market is booming. He places the last third act of the movie in Hong Kong. He has the premiere in China. So he definitely understands, like, oh yeah, I'm going to sort of capture this film market. And then next thing you know, Age of Extinction makes over a billion dollars. He knows what he's doing. He's a smart guy. And he definitely knows the business, if anything. You know, he's definitely more of a business director than he is an artistic director. But I definitely, you have to respect him for that. He has, we've done like 14, 15 episodes of this thing now. You have to understand that, you know, there's the artistic directors like a Kubrick or something like that, but then there's also the business-esque directors that know what people want and they give it to them and people enjoy his movies whether you like it or not and you know there's got to be some respect at least for that. <coughs> um, but also another thing that I like to do and I've been talking about mostly his blockbusters but what he does a lot recently is sort of having these interstitial movies, at least what I like to call them, in something like 13 Hours or Pain and Gain, where he's been doing recently uh, of movies where he has a Transformer series, this big sort of action blockbuster franchise, but then he takes some, some little smaller movies, 13 Hours, the only thing had like a $50 million budget. Pain and Gain has a similar budget to that, where <coughs> they're sort of self-contained individual stories uh, that, where 13 Hours was more of a serious film, uh, more serious than his action blockbusters, and then a Pain Gain, which is a comedy film, really, or a satire, in my opinion, a dark comedy satire, which is more on the comedy side. So you have the comedy and the Pain Gain, and then this Transformers film, which is like comedy, drama, action, and then you have sort of the drama action in something like a 13 Hours, which actually gained an Oscar nomination. Um, but also, the last point I want to make is. Uh, uh, he's a star maker. He's made people into stars, whether that be for good or for bad. You know, even Shia LaBeouf turned him into a household name. But guys like Ben Affleck before Armageddon was really nothing. Nick Cage before The Rock wasn't much. You know, then he started getting to Con Air and Face Off and movies like that. Um, <coughs> and then also Will Smith. You know, he was especially something like Bad Boys. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence really were these, weren't really these big stars, but he was able to make them into stars. And there's this great moment in Bad Boys where. Um, Michael Bay, uh, he has a, just a, sh a, Will Smith has like a, a shirt like this, a button up shirt, but no underneath shirt. So he's just running and it's falling off and he's like, uh, his top is off essentially. <laughs> it's like, and then, but then you have the incredible shot of him just running down with the shirt falling off and you see his chest. And it's like, you know, that, that's sort of the star making shot. That's what make Will Smith and from his TV star into a movie star. And then he made Independence Day afterwards and then he's the Will Smith we know today. But Bad Boys is the one that really started him. So he's really a star maker. and. Um, the thing is about his style is that it's been copied numerous times, but no one's been able to really achieve it. You know, of course you have the slow motion and the fast-paced editing and all that stuff, but people try to copy it, uh, like someone like a Peter Berg, uh, but no one really captures it as well as Michael Bay. So even though you think it's, this, it's mindless, sort of blockbuster, stupid action uh, that <coughs> doesn't tell coherent stories, he has a style, and no one can copy that style, and people like that style. And that's why I decided to cover him, because his newest movie is coming out, and because we always talk about like the Coen Brothers style or Quentin Tarantino style, and Michael Bay has his own style, and that should be sort of respected in its own art, not because it just does just because it doesn't win all these Oscars and isn't loved by the critics doesn't mean that it shouldn't be, you know, respected. Which I've said many times before, but I really want to hammer that point home. Anyways, guys, let's go over to what I think is his best movie. This might be a little bit of a controversial one because the safe pick is The Rock, but I'm actually going to go with Bad Boys. Uh, what I love about Bad Boys, it's typical of Michael Bay. It's his first movie ever. He took a lot of risk while making it, and I really think it is <coughs> the pinnacle of Michael Bay movie because 
This is the one that sort of introduced this style. Even the rock, I think, doesn't have as too much of a style in it. It does a little bit, but it sort of strains away from that. And as me, as a Michael Bay fan, I can say maybe the rock is the most technically adequate, um, but it's not the best Michael Bay movie. And the best Michael Bay movie is uh, Bad Boys. This is the one where it has lots of slow motion, not a crazy high budget, but makes it feel like a high budget. Lots of explosions, lots of <coughs> car chases, uh, beautiful, beautiful girls, uh, two awesome charismatic leads in Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, which I touched on a little bit before, but those two were TV stars. Also to have two uh, African-American leads in the 90s uh, to star a movie is very risky, especially for your first movie. You were definitely taking some chances on that, but he definitely uh, took a risk on that and it paid off, especially when it comes to the dialogue. Actually, the dialogue, <coughs> he didn't, he's not a writer. He doesn't write any of his movies. And he looked at the dialogue and it wasn't feeling very well and wasn't meshing well with the actors. And when it comes to a buddy cop movie, the two things that, the one thing really that has <coughs> a priority over everything else is the two main leads. They have to have chemistry. You think of something like a lethal weapon or even something like a road movie like Tommy Boy. The chemistry of the two main leads um, have to be there or else the movie does not sustain. And Bad Boys does this the best out of any of his movies. Better than Nick Cage and Sean Connery and The Rock, for example. But, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a bit of a cough. The thing is, is that the chemistry right there, it's just so dynamic. Uh, they actually threw out the script for most of it and let them improvise, do a lot of dialogue, which was a great smart decision by Michael Bay at the time. Um, and what's just another thing that I really love about it, it's just the chemistry is there, but you also have a pretty simple story, which Michael Bay, of course, is not that great about, but it's just awesome seeing these two. And the last thing I just want to point out about Bad Boys is that it doesn't use the CGI that he sort of relied on, something like an Armageddon and uh, even Transformers, which he's sort of been known to do in terms of that's the one thing that's missing from Bad Boys is the technology. You know, he's always looking for the best new technology and he's done these crazy shots with these interesting cameras and uh, definitely loves to have the CGI, of course, is a big part, but also some realism things, and especially with the actors, especially in the Transformers movies. But this movie doesn't really have that, but and it was a little, it's better for it because it keeps it a little more grounded. And then Bad Boys 2 is one where it really goes out of the way, which is a guilty pleasure of mine for sure, even because I think that's actually a great just action movie and just so much fun. But Bad Boys is grounds it. It's a little, a more of a streamlined story, and the chemistry is just awesome right off the bat. And stuff like this style. Michael Bay style with something like the slow motion really wasn't seen, you know. It was praised in something like The Matrix, but in Bad Boys uh, 1, people were like, okay, yeah, it's whatever. Uh, and people sort of thought, it, thought of it as cheesy, but now looking back at it, it's typical sort of 90s action. And I'd put it on the upper echelon of the 90s action movies, like a Terminator 2 or Speed or Point Break or something like that. Let's move over into what I think is uh, his most underrated movie and what is also my favorite movie I watched it again in preparation for this episode and you know I totally reaffirms my passion for that movie and this is Pain and Gain. For me this is a generational movie. I say underrated because I think it's got like under 40% or 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. I think Critics is the, this is the one time that I'm going to say this but Critics I think um, just missed the mark on this movie completely. completely. The thing is that they saw it as a crime movie where they're trying to make the characters relatable. But the movie isn't about that. You know, a lot of crime movies like American Gangster or Scarface or something like that, they're trying to make light of the crime. You know, these are good guys, but they do bad things and you try to make them relatable because they're the main protagonist. And a lot of comedy movies, especially recently, you want to relate with the protagonist and laugh with them <coughs> because they're making uh, good jokes. But what this does is it really is a satire. It's a dark comedy, like a Fargo, one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and what it does so well is really attach the thing that you're not laughing with the characters, but you're laughing at them. And it really shows that these guys who are just like these bumbling idiots, these meatheads, these super buff meatheads, you're not supposed to be related to them. You're supposed to sort of laugh with them and be like, these are the true criminals. These aren't the scar faces that you want to see. You know, that's why <coughs> Michael Bay was a perfect director for this. With the over excessiveness of the drugs and the crime and the American flags and really Mark Wahlberg's character is just a motivational speaker or it's just a criminal disguised as a motivational speaker. And that has the uh, American dream. It always talks about the American dream. And you know, this is crime is the American dream and all stuff and making your way up from nothing. And really that's not what it is, you know. Instead of, it mock, he's sort of mocking the crime movies. That's why Mark Wahlberg's character always says, yeah, I watch a lot of movies. I know what I'm doing because <laughs> these guys are sort of not these smart guys. These are what criminals are. These are not what these guys are. The real criminals, like someone like Fargo, are these sort of idiots that do stupid stuff and they're not these 
sort of clean guys that get busted and you want to cheer for them, it shows that this is really a dark satire. And I really appreciate for that. And uh, really, I say this is a generational movie because the internet has really picked up with this. And even myself, when I first saw it, I was a big fan of it. <coughs> and what do you see? A lot of the YouTube reviews. Just you search up Pain and Gain Review after watching this video. Look at all the comment sections. Jeremy Johns, Chris Stuckman, Flick Pick, uh, Schmoes No. Um, all the comment section always say like, man, you really missed the mark on this. I really enjoy this film, nine out of 10. A lot of them say that, and I really agree with that. And a lot of my friends, this is a generational movie, because I say this because a lot of my friends watch this movie and they're like, wow, I really enjoy this movie. I recommend this to a lot of people my age because they really enjoy it and sort of see it for what it is. And <coughs> I say the critics missed the mark on this, but that's just because I just, they didn't understand it, I don't think. And that's why I really think our generation sort of connects with it. Like, a generation connected with Easy Rider and Natural Born Killers, movies like that. And the last point I want to make is that really it's about, like I talked about the American dream, it's also about American excess and, you know, with the motivational speakers aspect and whatnot. And, um, and really talking about Hollywood and how it glamorizes these criminals. And it's just my favorite because I think it's really funny. It's very much a satire. I see it as, and if you see it like that, it's a really fun and enjoyable time. I definitely recommend it. <coughs> Some of Mark Wahlberg's best performances, maybe The Rock's best performance. A really, really great job. And just to show that, you know, The Rock is this bad guy masqueraded by religion. And Mark Wahlberg is this bad, mad, bad guy masqueraded as this motivational genius mastermind. And then the, um, Anthony Mackie's character is really just this pushover that doesn't do anything and doesn't really want to achieve anything or work hard. That's what they're all about, just working hard for their own body, but not working hard to get, the, get it the legal way. They want to cheat the system in a sense. Anyways, guys, I'm losing my voice here. Still a little bit sick. I should be good for next week. And uh, for all those reasons, that's why Michael Bay is the master of controlled chaos. Make sure you like the video, comment below, let me know what you think of it. And until next time, stay tuned.